Old news. When Julia comes, she sits by Stella's domain and watches the new baby. She barely talks to me. Stella doesn't talk to me either. She's too busy nuzzling Ruby. She is cute, little Ruby, with her ears flapping like palm leaves, but I am handsome and strong. Bob trots a circle around my belly before settling down in just the right spot. Give it up, Ivan, he says. You're old news. Julia gets out a piece of paper and a pencil. I can see that she is drawing Ruby. I move to the corner of my domain to pout. Bob grumbles. He doesn't like it when I disrupt his naps. Homework, Julia's father scolds. Julia sighs and puts her drawing aside. I grunt, and Julia glances in my direction. Poor old Ivan, she says. I've been ignoring you, haven't I? I grunt again, a dignified, indifferent grunt. Julia thinks for a moment, then smiles. She walks over to my domain, to the spot in the corner where the glass is broken. She slides papers through. She rolls a pencil across my cement floor. You can draw the baby elephant too, Julia says. I bite the pencil in half with my magnificent teeth. Then I eat some paper. Tricks. Even after Julia and her father leave, I try to keep sulking, but it's no use. Gorillas are not, by nature, powders. Stella, I call. It's a full moon, did you see? Sometimes, when we are lucky, we catch a glimpse of the moon through the skylight in the food court. I did, Stella says. She is whispering, and I realize that Ruby must be asleep. Is Ruby all right? I ask. She's too thin, Ivan, Stella says. Poor baby. She was in that truck for days. Mac bought her from a circus, the same way he bought me. But she hadn't been there long. She was born in the wild, like us. Will she be okay? I ask. Stella doesn't answer my question. The circus trainers change her to the floor, Ivan. All four feet, 23 hours a day. I puzzle over why this would be a good idea. I always try to give humans the benefit of the doubt. Why would they do that? I finally ask. To break her spirit, Stella says, so she could learn to balance on a pedestal, so she could stand on her hind legs, so a dog could jump on her back while she walked in mindless circles. I hear her tired voice, and I think of all the tricks Stella has learned. Introductions. When I awake the next morning, I see a little trunk poking out between the bars of Stella's domain. Hello, says a small clear voice. I'm Ruby. She waves her trunk. Hello, I say. I'm Ivan. Are you a monkey? Ruby asks. Certainly not. Bob's ears perk up, although his eyes stay closed. He's a gorilla, he says and I am a dog of uncertain heritage. Why did the dog climb your tummy? Ruby asks. Because it's there, Bob murmurs. Is Stella awake? I ask. And Stella's asleep, Ruby says. Her foot is hurting, I think. Ruby turns her head. Her eyes are like Stella's. Black and long-lashed, bottomless lakes fringed by tall grass. When is breakfast? She asks. Soon, I say, when the mall opens and the workers come. Where, Ruby twists her head in the other direction, where are the other elephants? It's just you and Stella, I say, and for some reason, I feel we have let her down. Are there more of you? Not, I say, at the moment. Ruby picks up a piece of hay and considers this. Do you have a mom and a dad? Well, I used to. Everyone has parents, Bob explains. It's unavoidable. Before the circus, I used to live with my mom and my aunts and my sisters and my cousins, Ruby says. She drops the hay, picks it up and twirls it. They're dead. I don't know what to say. I am not really enjoying this conversation, but I can see that Ruby isn't done talking. To be polite, I say, I'm sorry to hear that, Ruby. Humans killed them. She says, who else, Bob asks, 
and we fall silent. Stella and Ruby. All morning, Stella strokes Ruby, pats her, smells her. They flap their ears, they rumble and roar. They sway as if they're dancing. Ruby clings to Stella's tail. She slips under Stella's belly. Sometimes they just lean into each other. Their trunks twirl together like jungle vines. Stella looks so happy. It's more fun to watch than any nature show I've ever seen on TV. Home of the one and only Ivan. George and Mac are out by the highway. I can see them through one of the, my windows. They are next to each other on a tall wooden ladder, leaning against the billboard that tells the cars to stop and visit the one and only Ivan, Mighty Silverback. George has a bucket and a long-handled broom. Mac has pieces of paper. He slaps one against the billboard. George dips the broom into the bucket. He wets the paper with the liquid from the bucket and somehow the paper stays in place. They put up many pieces before they are done. When they climb down from the ladders, I see the picture of a little elephant to the billboard. The elephant has a lopsided smile. She is wearing a red hat and her tail curls like a pig's. She doesn't look like Ruby. She doesn't even look like an elephant. I've only known Ruby for one day and I could have drawn her better.